This video is sponsored by Wondershare Filmora. This, in my opinion, is one of the best mirrorless cameras you can buy on a budget in 2024. Why? Well, this is the Olympus OMD EM1, and back in its day, it used to be Olympus's flagship mirrorless camera. Now, on its release, I was working as a technical editor for a photography magazine, and I remember everyone absolutely losing their minds about some of the technology that was included within this new release. And because this camera offered such cutting edge features at launch, despite it being over 10 years old now, this thing is still incredibly capable even by 2024 standards. And the best part about all of this is it's incredibly affordable too, with this camera usually selling for between $275 and $360 on MPB, depending of course on the overall condition of the camera and what it comes packaged with. Now before some of you go running to the comments section to say, yeah, maybe in your country mate, but not here, lol, clickbait. Two things. Prices change constantly and there's not much I can honestly do about that unfortunately, it's just the nature of the used camera market. But as of making this video, this is the going price for this camera and has been for at least the last few months that I've been tracking it. And secondly, the whole reason why I mention MPB when quoting prices is because their prices don't tend to fluctuate wildly like the other auction sites, and they actually ship to a number of countries worldwide, including these ones on screen now, which means that the prices that I mentioned are applicable to most people watching this video. For the remaining countries who aren't able to order from MPB directly, I'm really sorry, it's just tough tits for you, I'm afraid, and your best bet is to to just search on online auction sites and pray to the camera gods that this camera is going for a similar price in your region. And again, if it isn't, it's nothing to do with me, so don't get angry at me, okay? But anyway, salty commenters aside, what exactly makes this camera just so good, even by today's standards? Well, firstly, this is a Micro Four Thirds camera, and even after all of this time, the Micro Four Thirds system seems to be going stronger than ever, meaning that there are a ton of lenses to choose from that would pair very nicely with this EM1. And further to that point, Micro Four Thirds lenses are generally pretty small, lightweight and affordable, which helps to keep your camera nice and lightweight, but your wallet not so light hopefully. Now personally, I've enjoyed using this 20mm f1.7 pancake lens whilst testing this camera because not only is it tiny, but the image quality is actually pretty damn good too, even when shooting wide open. But when picking your lenses, there is one thing to consider and that's Micro Four Thirds cameras have a two times crop. And basically what that means is that this 20mm lens will actually end up creating photos that look closer to something like a 40mm lens on a full frame camera. Though that's exactly why I bought this lens because I personally like shooting street photography with a focal length anywhere between 35 and 50 millimeters, as I just feel that these focal lengths give images a nice, natural and candid appearance. But anyway, before I get too carried away, we'll obviously talk about image quality in far more detail a little later on, so let's first talk about the impressive range of features that Olympus managed to cram into this camera. Firstly, on the back there's a large and bright 3 inch 1.04 million dot tiltable touchscreen, which is obviously super helpful when shooting at high and low angles. But if composing your shots using a screen just isn't your thing, then right above it we also have a built-in electronic viewfinder with a crispy 2.36 million dot resolution. There's a dedicated mode dial that's lockable, so that means it's not going to get knocked by mistake in your bag, and although there's no pop-up flash, you can always attach an external flash gun via this proper hot shoe port on the top if you needed to. Now you've probably noticed at this point just how many physical buttons and dials there are on this camera, in fact I'm pretty certain Olympus have made use of just about every square inch of this thing, meaning you always have quick access to most of the frequently used settings. Also, some of these buttons can actually be customised using the settings menu so that the control of the camera can be tailored to best suit your own personal shooting style. On the top plate there are two dedicated command dials which are super tactile and perfectly positioned for your thumb and index finger. I'm also a big fan of this switch on the back here because this quickly allows you to toggle between different functionalities for the two command dials and various other buttons. For example, if you're on manual mode and you set this to mode 1, the command dials will adjust the shutter speed and aperture as you would expect, but switch this over to mode 2 and now they adjust the ISO and the white balance. These settings can of course be fine tuned in the settings menu and you can even set specific functionalities whilst operating in the MASP shooting modes amongst other options. Just to throw another example at you, although there is no dedicated exposure compensation dial on the top of this camera, that's really not a problem because I've just set it so that when I switch over to aperture priority mode, the front dial now allows me to adjust exposure compensation whilst the rear dial still sets the aperture 
aperture. Honestly, the customizability of this camera is pretty intense and I've barely scratched the surface here. So if you're into that kind of thing, this is probably what your wet dreams are made of. Now, overall, in terms of handling, I would actually go so far as to say that this is one of the nicest mirrorless cameras I have ever shot with, and that includes modern day releases. And that's mainly because it has a much deeper hand grip than most other cameras, making it super comfortable to hold even for larger hands. Oh, and I should also mention that the camera body itself is pretty damn robust. It offers weather sealing for protection against moisture and dust, but it's also shockproof and it's operational in temperatures as low as minus 10 degrees Celsius. But this camera only gets more impressive when we start talking about the internal specs. And actually, if you start to look really closely just in here, that's it, a little bit closer, you may be able to spot today's sponsor, Wondershare Filmora. Filmora is an easy to use video editing app that has a bunch of clever AI driven tools that make it super easy for just about anyone to start making pro level video content using a PC, Mac or mobile device. All you need to do is download and install the Filmora app and then click on start a new project. Once you've imported your clips, you can simply drag and drop them onto the timeline to start editing. If you're editing footage of someone speaking like I am now, you can use the AI text based editor to quickly delete the bits you don't need, like this bit for example, poopy poopy bum bum. There are hundreds of creative effects and transitions to choose from, as well as a bank of stock photos and videos you can simply drag onto your timeline to enhance your videos. With Filmora's AI Music Generator, you can create your very own backing music, tailor-made to the right tempo and feeling just with a few clicks. You can finish off your video with Filmora's brand new LUTs, giving your video a professional color grade in just seconds, some of which have been made to emulate popular TV shows and movies. You can try out Filmora for free today by using the link in the video description below. Okay, so for real this time, this camera actually does have a pretty impressive list of specs. Firstly, this thing actually has 5-axis in-body image stabilization, or IBIS for short, which is not only helpful for keeping your photos nice and sharp when shooting handheld, but it's also great for video, which we'll come back to in just a minute. I also should have mentioned earlier that this camera has a proper mechanical shutter too, and this can be set to a shutter speed as fast as 1 8,000th of a second, which is pretty sweet. Though you can actually go one step further than this and set it as fast as 1 16 thousandth of a second using the electronic shutter. Now in terms of autofocus, this camera offers a total of 81 AF points, with 37 of them being the more accurate phase detection AF, meaning that despite its age, it's still more than capable for most types of photography. What's more, moving the AF point can be done either by using the D-pad or by simply tapping the screen, and there's even an AF tracking mode which works pretty well even if it is a little bit slow by today's standards. Now for sports and wildlife photography, there is a 10 frames per second continuous burst mode which is pretty nice. Though this does come with a few caveats. Firstly, the 10 frames per second burst mode is only available when the focus is locked. So if you want to use continuous autofocus, then the max burst rate is reduced slightly to 6 frames per second, but let's be honest, that's still plenty fast enough for most things. Also, if you are planning on capturing your images in RAW, then you will hit the buffer at around 40 photos at 10 frames per second, or 45 images at 6 frames per second, depending of course on the write speed of your memory card. But if you're happy shooting in fine quality JPEG, Peg, then the buffer will increase slightly to around 75 photos at 10 frames per second. Now earlier on you may have spotted this big red button on the top plate here which is a pretty big giveaway that this camera is able to record video too. And with it having a fairly decent phase detect AF and IBIS my initial thoughts were that this has a lot of potential for being a great hybrid camera. Now although the video quality is pretty good for such an old camera there is no avoiding the fact that video has come on quite a lot since this EM1 was first released and as a result the settings this camera camera offers could be considered pretty basic by today's standards. For example, there's obviously not going to be any 4K recording here, so you are locked into HD, but even the 1080p video maxes out at 30 frames per second, so that means there's no scope for getting creative slow motion shots. This camera was released way before the days of log profiles becoming the norm, so don't expect anything like that, and despite there being a mic port on the side, there's unfortunately nowhere to plug your headphones to monitor the audio levels. Right next to this, there is a HDMI output for attaching a monitor, but this is a micro HDMI output which I know a lot of people have a problem with because micro HDMI cables are notorious for bending and breaking. But all of those gripes aside, if you're really not asked about 4K footage or super slick video modes then I still think this would make a great starter camera for anyone looking to capture basic video. But enough about video, what about the image quality for stills? Well I'm pleased to say that 10 years on this 16 megapixel micro four thirds sensor is still able to deliver. Although some people may say that 16 megapixels is a little bit 
low resolution compared to modern cameras, I honestly believe that it's plenty big enough for most types of work. Let's face it, most photos just end up being viewed on a smartphone screen anyway, and for this, 16 megapixel images are plenty large enough. So long as you aren't planning on making any big dramatic crops in post, you'll be absolutely fine. But anyway, the raw files I captured with this EM1 displayed nice natural colors and plenty of dynamic range for pulling back highlights and shadows in Lightroom or Photoshop. Overall, it's pretty hard to find any major faults with this camera, so it's completely understandable why so many people still absolutely love the EM1 even in 2024.